Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through uh, and following through 14, 9 through 14. <clears throat> He, Jesus, also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, Jesus said, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Such a a beautiful parable and such a, just sort of turns our world uh, the way we understand it uh, on its head. Or maybe it turns it right side up. Yeah. uh, Because we're living in a world that's uh, upside down because of the fall. So that's what brings the humility to my mind is the Pharisee, the, 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 the good people, the good person standing there saying, thank you, God, that... Uh, you have saved me from all of these. I'm not like these people. And uh, yeah. the publican says, uh, thank you for having, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that to yeah. me is just the epitome of humility. It, it seems like it, it is the epitome of humility. And it seems like part of what we've been zeroing in on in this study is how that that sort of humility with regards to, to Christ is kind of at the heart of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And it's perhaps at the heart of the gospel in a way that even, again, we who've maybe been living out the gospel or trying to for many years, maybe it's a piece of it that we haven't fully lived out or fully grasped or fully wrestled with yet, which is at the heart of the gospel is this turning point of humility where we no longer count ourselves among the righteous. That's like this great irony that seems to run through the Gospels of, of this comparison between the righteous and the sinners. And I came for the sinners. And there are some people that think that they're in the righteous camp. <laughs> and and in, and the more the deeper you go, you realize, oh, wait, there's not really two camps. Uh-huh. There's just uh-huh. those who have made the step of humility yes. and those who have not yet done so. Yes. And it's a crucial step, you know. And that's, again, from the beginning of these 12 steps uh, up until now, it seems like that's one of the differences here is that this is, this is a proposing a – uh, a mental, spiritual, social exercise whereby we really wrestle with that keystone of the gospel, this question of humility with regards to God and, and other people and ourselves. You know, what? who am I really? Who is God really? And at least the question, the, the answer to the first question is that I am, I am powerless. My life yeah. is unmanageable. Like fundamentally, I am weak. And even when I do good, I don't really know why I do good. It's only because, mm-hmm. gosh, God gave me the grace that day and somehow I was able to. Um, and it's only by leaning more into that grace that I'm able to do anything good at all. But the humility towards God, the truth about God is that he is this divine physician. He wants to heal us. But we can't receive that healing unless we want it, unless we think we actually mm-hmm. need it. Mm. Ugh. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, yeah. the paradox is that the the moment that I uh, get enough humility in that first step to admit uh, mm-hmm. that I'm powerless, this 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 it's this paradox that that comes <clears throat> once I admit my weakness, uh, a power begins to come in my life, and that that yeah. it doesn't come from me; it comes from something external to me. Though living within me, as as the scripture would say, you know, God is closer to us than we are to ourselves, <clears throat> and uh, it, it's a it's just it's baffling to me. I was thinking this morning as I was preparing for this a little bit, praying about it, how um, how utterly countercultural living the Christian life in the Catholic context is, uh, and and we see it. It materializes, uh, if that's the right word, it takes on flesh in these twelve steps, right? That I, it's the, it's like the the uh, the uh, prayer as, as, uh, ascribed to Saint Francis, right? I get by giving, I live by dying, I I um, I win by losing. Uh, it's just it's it's um it's just a 
a curious, a curious way of doing business with the world. And that's one of the ways that I've heard it described, you know, recovery, uh, using the 12-step model, recovery is changing the way that we do business with the world. And I think that's what it means for us as Catholic Christians, is that uh, in order to live the life of Jesus or allow Jesus to live his life through us, it's all about changing the way, by grace, changing the way that I do business with the world.